moving forward uh, we are now that we have understood what long shot strategy are and now we are here to clear more concepts on different approaches taken by the fund managers and fund houses uh, one of them being the rise of quant investing in india so as we all know that uh, algorithms like machine learning and artificial intelligence have become global buzzwords influencing almost every industry and alerting our perceptions altering our perceptions of human machine interface in the country however considering the use of these machines uh, interactive languages in a market like alternative investment funds and portfolio management services are or as well as mutual funds which is primarily reliant on human judgment almost seems exaggerated but today ai and machine learning are now being used in the alternate investment funds and portfolio management services in the form of quant funds so now let's deep dive into this into the rise of quant investing in india with market expert mr saurabh mukherjee founder and chief investment officer at marcellus investment managers let me take a moment to introduce marcellus uh, marcellus uh, marcellus purpose is to make wealth creation simple and accessible uh, by being trustworthy and transparent capital allocators the quantitative framework which you uh, which is to use a combination of uh, forensic accounting and capital allocation assessments define our define their investable universe the their experienced investment team through in depth primary research and constructs a portfolio of company deep competitive moats let me also take a moment to introduce mr saurabh mukherjee Saurabh was educated at London School of Economics, where he learned B.Sc. in Economics. He is also an M.Sc. in Economics in London. Saurabh was the co-founder of Clear Capital, and in two thousand seven, he was rated by Excel Survey as one of the top cap top top small cap analysts in the UK. In India, Saurabh was rated as the leading equity strategist in two thousand fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen by Asia Money Poll. Prior to setting up Marcellus, Saurabh was the CEO of Ambit Capital. Saurabh is a founding director of Association of Portfolio Managers in India, a trade body. He continues to be a part of multiple SEBI working groups, whose role is to review and reform the rules governing to portfolio management in India. So, my dear investors, now I'll be handing over the mic to Mr. Vikas Agarwal, who will in turn be handing over the mic to Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Pragya. Hello, Sora. How are you? Hi, Vikas. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you for accepting our request and agreeing to speak to our investors. And you know, I want to thank ET Partners because you are a media partner, ET Markets, because they gave us this opportunity to reach out to more number of people. And you also accepted a request. So idea is to talk about quant investing, how it is rising in India. So would you like to share any presentations or? Sure, yeah. or Sure. So let me use these slides to, to start. So you need to go to present, and then once can you click you, on that, can you see my screen? Uh, one second. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah, you can see my screen, right? And uh, because how much time do I have? Yeah. So we have for twenty-five minutes, uh, okay. and then if you allow us, we'll ask you one or two questions. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So let me take twenty-five minutes just to talk through why we in Marcellus two years ago. Two years ago, we built a quant team, and and then over the last six months, we brought a quant product to the market, both as a, both as a PMS and as an investment advisory offering on wealth desk and small case. So why did we do that, right? So, so the background is this, right? In 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 the 1980s, the decade in which I grew up, the country was very different. Uh, those of you who remember the 80s will know we used to have antiquated cars, antiquated phones, TVs. It was a poor country. It was a slow growth country. Uh, if i think back to the 80s we used to lose almost every cricket match we used to play barring the world cup in 83 it was a disastrous decade for sport and, and the sorts sorry, of companies sorry, sorry your hmm. voice is not clear can you be a little bit louder please if you don't mind okay okay look i'm, I'm okay i'm i'm, okay, I'm as, as close to the machine as i can be is this any better yeah 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 much better thank you yeah, thank so, you so we used to lose almost every cricket match the sports ke taraf se was a disastrous decade and that was a different india and the sorts of companies that dominated the stock market then you can see it on that list right it's astonishing for me that a fertilizer company was amongst the largest companies in the country then Com people making clothes and t-shirts were also amongst the the largest company it was a poor backward slow growth economy right if you fast forward quickly 
India today is a dynamic economy. India today stands where America stood a year ago. We had a decade of rapid joining up of the country. Highway network has doubled. Airline network has pentupled. Bank accounts have trebled. 50x growth in 50x growth in in broadband connectivity. And much like much like what America went through a, a century ago, as the country gets networked, the country gets networked. The economy consolidates. Each each sector rolls up. Each sector gets consolidated into the hands of one or two companies. I've given you the, the names of some, some of the American consolidators. For example, the entire tomato ketchup industry in the space of 50 years was gobbled up by Heinz. The entire breakfast cereals industry was gobbled up by Kellogg's. Exactly the same thing is happening in India. A handful of Indian companies are, are gobbling up sectors in India. So you know, whether it's in paints, it's in adhesive, it's in pipes, in jewelry, in banking and financial services, this country is consolidating rapidly, right? And the reason for the rapid consolidation, right? The reason that that the the, the network cons the, the joining up of the economy is happening so fast is first off, first off, we've had we've had more infrastructure construction in the last 10 years than in the previous 60 years put together, right? And we'll you know we've discussed this in other presentations. So I'll just quickly touch upon it in summary. The doubling of the highway network, the pentupling of the uh, the airline network the tripling of the banking system, right? dramatic improvements in infrastructure. The more you infra improve infrastructure, the more you join up a country, the more you join up a country, the lower the chances of a small local or regional player surviving. Naturally, national giants survive. Secondly, we've reformed the tax system. Both direct taxes and indirect taxes have radically been overhauled in the last five years. No other large economy has reformed its ta tax system as radically as India has done. And what that is doing is it's crushing the black economy, right? Compliance is improving. You can see uh, uh, from the government's own tax collection data that central government taxes to GDP is running at an all-time high. And small businesses are shutting down by the lakhs. The official data on the Ministry of Corporate Affairs website is around 8 lakh small businesses shutting down every year. I reckon the, the sort of unofficial figure will be 2 to 3x that. As these chota businesses die, naturally the market share migrates uh, say in the case of the jewelry sector, the market share migrates to a titan. In the case of the paint sector, the market share migrates to a Asian paint. So radical tax reform driving the uh, destruction of chota businesses, right? Third is banking reform, right? Uh, 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 till 2015, 2016, our banking system was properly, uh, properly uh, uh, broken with almost eight, nine years of high NPAs. Uh, uh, over the last seven, eight years, through regulatory reform, specifically the insolvency and bankruptcy code, and secondly, through massive infusions of capital, we've repaired the banking system. Uh, uh, the Indian banking system, in terms of tier one capital, is amongst the is the strongest in the world in the big amongst the big economies, right? And finally, the the digital piece, which you'll be reading about every day, I'm sure. What we have built in the digital ecosystem is unique. Neither America nor China nor Europe has built anything comparable. And the rise of Aadhaar the rise of UPI, the rise of ONDC, right? These are unique uh, events. It's transforming the way many of India's leading companies do business. <clears throat> many of India's leading companies' strongest drivers of growth now is the digital lens. So whether it is, say, investments of ours like HDFC Bank or a Bajaj Finance or an Asian Paints or a Titan or a Dr. Lal Path Labs, the critical driver has become the ability to use India's unique digital ecosystem. I stress again, uh, there is nothing like this in any other country on scale and in technology, and it's driving rapid digitization of the country. It's again skill killing the small company. The result of all this is you can see in the bottom left chart, the result is rapid consolidation of corporate profits. So if you see the black line in the bottom, in the bottom left chart, the black line is the share of profits accounted for by the for by the 20 largest companies profit share of the 20 largest companies that number at the turn of the century was around 40 percent that number is now as you can see pushing 90 percent right 20 large companies accounting for for 90 percent of india's profits now what this does is very interesting right the stock market is not able the stock market is not able to discount fully this sort of rapid change and this is where quant investing starts becoming very relevant very interesting right now how do we know how do we know that the stock market is not being able to discount fully this sort of rapid change right there's a simple way to 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 figure this out what we did was and we did this exercise for the first time two years ago that's when we decided to build the quant team 
We have since then repeated this exercise several times. Two years ago, we said, let's take data for the last 20 years. Each year, each year for the last 20 years, let's identify the companies that in the preceding year were above average on ROCE, return on, return on capital employed, and, and above average on reinvestment rate. Reinvestment rate basically is a measure of growth. Reinvestment rate in technical terms, it's cash flow from cash flow from investing divided by cash flow from operations, right? How much of its surplus is a company pumping back into the business, right? So every year for the last 20 years, we identified the companies which were above average on both of these counts, high ROC, high reinvestment, right? So let's take an example. Suppose back in 2003, we identified 20 such companies, right? We then said, how did these companies that we identified, the superior companies from O3, how did they do over five years, 10 years, right? What was their performance, right? We then repeated the exercise with companies, the superior companies from 04, then next year, the superior companies from 05. And what you can see in that, in the right-hand side bars, the bars that I've highlighted in, in that red, uh, red dashed box, what you can see is that if you keep identifying superior companies, their cash flow compounding, their free cash flow compounding, their, their ability to grow the business is around 22%. But we can also see the stock market is not fully rewarding these companies. Stock market is saying these companies' share prices should be going up by 16%. So full six percentage points ka, ka, de, ka alpha to be had. Companies are, these superior companies are growing at 22. Stock market is saying their share price is growing at 16, right? In contrast, if you take the rest of the BSE 500, the bottom layer of, the bottom layer of bars on this chart, the rest of the BSE 500, the, 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 the bars are the other way around. Their free cash flow growth is only 9%. Their share prices are rising by, by 14%, right? So, so this paradox, the fact that superior companies, companies that are consistently growing cash faster, their share prices are not appreciating as fast, whereas more mediocre companies are seeing their share prices grow faster than their growth. This is something that quant investing helped us catch. And then we built an algo, we built an algo called Meritor Q to profit from this, right? So how does Meritor Q work? What is the quant algo that we use here, right? So there's a huge amount of coding behind it. We're using Python here. We're using uh, something like 5,000 sets of annual reports here. What exactly are we doing? There are there's five elements to the, the quant checklist that the Marcellus team has built. Firstly, as, as you'd expect, we're looking for clean accounts, right? We have a bunch of accounting, forensic accounting rules. We code that in and we're looking for companies that pass those forensic accounting rules basis the, the code that has been written by our quant team, right? Secondly, we're looking for companies that are, that are low leverage. So the first step is you've got to be clean. Secondly, your debt equity ratios have to be low. Thirdly, you have to be consistently profitable, right? I've spoken repeatedly about the necessity of investing in companies with consistently good return on capital, right? And then next leg, now that we've identified that you're a clean company, you have low leverage and you're consistently profitable, the next leg is we look at relative to the free cash flows that you generate, relative to the free cash flows that you generate, what is your what is your share price? So we're looking for companies that are undervalued on price to free cash flow. And the higher the the higher the 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 the, the higher the price to free cash flow, the lower the allocation, and vice versa, right? If you're a clean, well-run, highly profitable company with a low price to free cash flow, we allocate more. This is the core of the Meritor Q algo that we run both in PMS and in investment advisory. Right? We went live with the algo five months ago, so so the live performance results are nothing much to write home about. We are mildly ahead of the benchmark, but the 16-year back test. The 16-year back test, 2006 onwards, is in front of you. If you take the 16-year back test, this sort of this algo has produced uh, returns which are around 21, 22 uh, percent. I, I, I would stress these are gross of fees. Net of fees, the returns would be around 20 percent. So, so over the last 16 years, you're generating gross returns of 21.8 percent. Where are we getting those returns from? If if you if you start from the top of the funnel. If we had just invested in the BSE 500 equal weighted over the last 16 years, we would have still compounded at a decent rate. 7.9% uh, is similar to the Government of India bond yield, right? That's the BSE 500 equal weighted return. As soon as you add the forensic screen, the forensic screen is to weed out companies doing naughty things with their accounts. As soon as you add that, the return jumps from 7.9, it jumps to 13.5. 
And that's the first layer of quant coding here. You're adding a, a, a forensic screen coded into Python. You're adding thousands of annual reports, but the, the it's not a human being reading the annual report. The machine is reading the annual reports and you're improving the return to 13.5%. Uh, After that, you're then saying, I want companies with low leverage and consistently good return on capital, consistently good profitability. Return jumps from 13.5 to 18.3. And then you bring in the price to free cash flow there. I want companies which are attractively valued on price to free cash flow. Return jumps from 18.3 to, to 21.8, right? What I find so fascinating in this process, and it's been an eye opener for me, is even though the, the, the leverage and profitability layer, the price to free cash flow layer is enhancing return, the biggest return enhancer, the biggest return enhancer is forensic screening, right? Because our market still has so many naughty companies, eliminating the naughty companies using quant techniques is a major uh, booster of returns. You jump from 7.9 to 13.5. So 5.6%, 5.6 percentage points boost to returns, right? Um, and just to sort of, again, summarize the whole process, you're starting the screening process with accounting. You're moving on to low financial leverage, good profitability. You're then going on to uh, a screening basis profitability. And finally, your position sizing basis, position sizing basis, uh, attractive price to free cash flow valuations, right? The semi-annual rebalancing. So let me dwell a little bit on that. Every six months, every six months, you're rebalancing the portfolio. Why are we rebalancing the portfolio every six months? Because uh, uh, say at the end of the financial year, at the end of uh, say FY23, which is around about now, we re we we launch say a, a fresh portfolio basis the the FY23 financials. FI23 annual report, we launch a, a fresh portfolio. Come September, October, the share prices would have moved by then. And therefore, back uh, uh, six months hence, we will load up further. We will increase our position sizing further in good companies whose share prices have gone down. We do this in our qualitative PMSs anyway. As many of you know, last year when, say, Dr. Lal Path Labs fell by 50% uh, fell by fifty percent in the first six months of 2022, in July, we doubled the position. Similarly, in Meritor Q, uh, every six months, shares, the share prices which go down, companies whose price to free cash flow goes down, we increase the position. Companies whose price to free cash flow goes up, we, we reduce the position, right? The, in Meritor Q, the quant algo does it. In our qu qualitative portfolios, the human beings are our qualitative fund managers do it, right? Uh, uh, now, the, uh, 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 I'll come back to the results again, right? I showed you the results. Uh, two slides ago in raw returns, right? 7.9, 13.5%, 18.3%, going down all the way to 21.8%. This was the raw returns. But actually, a better way to think about quant investing is risk adjusted returns. You take the returns, you divide them by volatility, you divide them by standard deviation because, because risk and return are two sides of the, of the same coin. So if you look at risk adjusted returns uh, uh, without any quant algo, if you if you were to buy the BSE 500 equal weighted over the last 16 years, you end up with very poor returns. You end up with 0.33, which means for every unit of risk you're taking, uh, you're getting only 0.33 th units of return. So every unit of risk, you're only getting 0.33 units of return. As soon as you bring forensic into the picture, the risk adjusted return doubles to 0.63. You then bring in profitability and leverage into the picture. You hit the the the, the one number. This 1.02 is important because for the first time, you're now getting more returns than you're getting risk. Then you bring in price to free cash flow and you position size basis price to free cash flow and you jump to 1.23, right? So what Quant is allowing us to do is systematically use finance tools, use big data, use Python, instantly gives superior risk adjusted returns. And as I said, it's available both in it's available both in uh, in PMS form and in uh, 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 in investment uh, in invest investment advisory form. In PMS, obviously, as is the SEBI's rule, the minimum is fifty lakhs. But in investment for advisory form through through small case and wealth desk, we've been able to get the ticket size down to to as low as two lakhs. So this is the first time Marcellus has been able to create a product that the small investor with a few lakhs to invest can avail of. So, so I'll stop my presentation there, and Vikas, I'll hand over to you if you have any questions uh, for me. Right. So, thank you, Saurabh. Uh, uh, great to learn more about Merit of you. So, first question is uh, while you you are open to 
uh, balance the portfolio, your, uh, which is your consistent compounder, uh, any point of time, as in even on a monthly basis. Whereas in Meritoku, you are doing it uh, semi-annually. So do, don't yeah. you think, uh, yeah, how does it work? Don't you think uh, in the quant strategy, this is delayed like six mm -hmm. months is quite some time. So look, I mean, uh, uh, because it's quant, you could argue we could do it every month, right? But if we do it every month, there's two problems. One is uh, the investor has brokerage expenses to pay for. He has taxes to pay for. Because remember, if you, the more you rebalance the portfolio, the more you will churn. The more you will churn, the more broker will, uh, the more the broker will make money from our client. And secondly, the more the client will get hammered on short-term capital gains tax. Right. So if you churn a portfolio too much, you are reflecting the latest data. That's great. But you are hammering the client through brokerage and and, uh, and capital gains tax. But if you don't rebalance the portfolio for say months on an end, you're being negligent because there could be new information that should be reflected in the portfolio. So uh, uh, backtesting this across various uh, re periods of rebalancing, we tried monthly rebalancing, we looked at quarterly rebalancing. You realize that six monthly rebalance is the best balance. Six, six monthly is the ideal period. Jada bhi nahi hai, kam bhi nahi hai. You do it monthly, it's excessive. Now, in call it in call investing, in qualitative investing, because this isn't a challenge because our portfolios are low churn, right? So our say say, say, say portfolio like CCP churn is around 10%. Right. So sal me ek stock karite hai, sal me ek stock bechte hai. So the churn is moderated there. The client does not end up enriching the broker or the tax man. Quant may wo karna possible nahi hai. Every time you hit the rebalance button on quant, the portfolio churns say 20, 30 percent. And if you do that every month, these 30 percent portfolio ko ghumaoge, client ka brokerage or tax se barwa di ho jata hai. So therefore, we decided in quant that every six months we will press the rebalance button. The client will get a refreshed portfolio. So in the investment advisory format, because the client gets offered the refreshed portfolio. The client might say, Mereko nahi lena. I don't want to refresh it. In which case, the client carries on with the old portfolio. A suggestion, a recommendation to the client is, please take the refreshed portfolio. It will help you improve your returns. Otherwise, the whole objective is beaten up. Then There is no point. Haan, in bilkul, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. But you never know, right? Some people believe that they are Warren Buffett reborn. So some people believe they, they, they can do it better. So you, in investment advisory, the client has that prerogative because it's his account. He's managing it. We are simply giving him a portfolio to the best of our abilities. Right. right. Second question, uh, sort of at an investor level, let's say he has 50 lakhs rupees and he wants to give mandate to Marcellus and he's got an option mm -hmm. of both CCP and Meritago. Which one do you suggest? Or, or rather, let me put it this way, what kind of investor should invest in the bond strategy? So, so look, returns for, so if I look at CCP, we've been looking after it now for CCP, we've been running for now the best part of six years. So net of fees CCP ka return aya hai 18-19 percent, right? Over a six year horizon, 18-19 uh, percent. A merit or Q net of fees is also going to end up in that sort of vicinity, right? So CCP and merit or Q uh, for PMS clients, your experience is similar. Where the two products are different is merit or Q potentially will have lower drawdown, right? So CCP, because it's 15 stocks, very concentrated. And as, as I think you know, Vikas, and as I'm sure your clients in AI, PMS also know, CCP is very concentrated and it's very high quality. And we don't spend too much time thinking ki price to free cash flow, kya hai, kya valuation hai. Focus both heavily quality ke upar hai. The result of that is you end up with the sort of drawdown we've had in CCP in the last 12 months. We're down 14%. CCP companies' profits are up 25% last 12 months, making share price down 14%. And a lot of people have heart problems in our country. They, they tend to get scared when the portfolio falls 14%. Right. Merit or Q avoids that. Merit or Q has 40 stocks, 40 stock uh, in comparison to CCP ka 14. CCP is 14 stocks, Merit or Q is 40 stocks. Not only does Merit or Q have more stocks, it also has price to free cash flow as a critical driver, which means that you don't end up buying very high price stocks and therefore your drawdown is lower. So, so both portfolios will give you long-term returns in the high teens, I reckon, right? Historical experience suggests, historical experience suggests that both portfolios should give you uh, long-term returns in the high teens. That's been the historical experience. I stress again, CCP last 12 months has been minus 14, but CCP over a six year period, uh, uh, we've seen high teens, but the difference is Meritor Q is a smoother ride, fewer drawdowns. 
CCP is a little bit more dramatic, right? If you want better returns than, than high teens, then the best we can offer you is Little Champs. Little Champs is a small cap product. It is now approaching four years in age. And over that four years, our net of fees, it's uh, ended up compounding in the low 20s. Right? That doesn't mean it will compound in the low 20s in future, but typically a high quality small cap portfolio in India, typically a high quality small cap portfolio in India gives returns a little bit superior to large and mid cap portfolios like CCP and Right of You. Uh, we we have we hadn't taken money in Little Champs for a long time. A couple of months ago, we opened up Little Champs for flows. Uh, CCP is large cap. Little Champs is small cap. CCP has no exit load. Little Champs does have a three percent exit load in the first year, two percent in the second year, one percent in the third year. So if you if you are happy with high teens returns and you don't want any exit entry load, consider CCP or Meritor Q. Meritor Q will give you less hard burn, I think. And if you want a little bit better returns and you're willing to live with the illiquidity of small cap, then consider little champs. One question, sort of, uh, from one of our investors. So he gets confused between rising giant and little champ and keep asking me, like, mm -hmm. one is invested in the mid cap space, the other one is small, but right. the mid cap also has few small cap in it. So, which right. one? So, from sure. a risk point of view, can you throw yeah. some more? Right? Yeah, so let's get into that. So, CC, let's take it step by step. So, CCP typical market cap is forty billion dollars, right? CCP Chauda stocks, fourteen stocks, typical market cap three lakh crore ke aspas, right? Little Champs is the bilkul ulta. Little Champs market cap is around the billion dollars, right? Which means eight thousand crore. Rising Giants is in between these two. Rising Giants ka typical market cap is four billion dollars, which is around thirty thousand crores, right? Rising Giants typical market cap is thirty thousand crores. Little Champs is one fourth. Little Champs market cap is one fourth that of Rising Giants. Now they have some stocks in common. Uh, uh, they have some stocks in common, but uh, seventy percent of Rising Giants is uh, seventy percent of the Rising Giants stocks are completely distinct from the Little Champs stocks. So, for example, Chola Mandalam right. Finance uh, and Divi's Lab are in Rising Giants. Chola Mandalam Finance and Divi's Lab are high quality mid cap companies. Uh, Chola and Divi's Lab are obviously not in are not in Little Champs. Similarly, Moltec Packaging is in Little Champs. Moltec Packaging is a chota company, high quality chota company, dominant small niche player. Moltec Packaging is not in is not in Rising Giants. Rising Giants market cap is four times that, four guna that of Little Champs. Understood. Uh, I'll take last question. Uh, one of the investors is mentioning that it's you know better to focus on short term when you are running quant. And uh, both uh, uh, Mr. Manjar and Warren Buffett said that. And in the long run, the same gets breakdown. Would you like to take this question? I mean, look, I don't think uh, it's, I don't think in India it's ever good to focus on the short term. Uh, if you focus on the short term in India, your broker gets rich, uh, and the taxman gets rich, uh, and you'll get you'll be impoverished. So I think the the Kamath, the Kamaths of Zero Da they've been very vocal about this. I think it's good, and it's all credit to the Zero Da people being vocal so the uh, the comment said i think there was a tweet from one of the brothers um, yes. three months ago saying 99 percent of zero dollar clients make no money and yeah. then also last month because with sebi published analysis that 90 percent of fno clients make no money now i was a little surprised by this because everybody i meet who does this short-term trading they tell me Ki bahut paisa ban hai. Right? <laughs> i've never met a short-term trader who says nahi kama rao. So I was stunned to hear that zero dame 99% of people don't make any money. And I was stunned to hear from SEBI that 90% of FNO traders don't make any money. Uh, but you know, if authorities of like SEBI and zero are saying this, I think we have to take it seriously. So anybody who's listening to this uh, uh, program and they fancy themselves as a good short term trader, um, the data suggests that it's tough to make money in the short run. And I certainly have no ability. And uh, none of the 120 people in Marcellus have any ability to make money in the short run using quant, qual, or astrology. A lot of people use astrology as well for short term trading. Right, right, sir. In fact, I just want to add here this is not a pure quant, quant per se, which is like every day, kya ho ra and all basis that the investment is done. Investment is done. Here, basic fundamental is the foundation is pure fundamental, and then on top of that, every six months, the rebalancing yeah. is taking so, so it's a good point you make that sort of you know day to day trading quant no wo america se india aaya hai i think that's a deadly thing in india it doesn't work hamare desh mein liquidity nahi hai stocks mein right we barely have 30 stocks with decent liquidity right secondly hamare desh mein price impact cost and brokerage costs are high 
and thirdly we have very high short term capital gains tax so this american style called which is high frequency trading a lot of people in india seem to be getting attracted to it a lot of people especially with engineering and maths backgrounds because unko engineering and maths backgrounds they find they have a natural affinity for numbers they i've met many of these over the last 4 5 years uh, very bright people with often with iit backgrounds uh, strong mathematical and computer computer skills they tend to get very sucked into this very inspired by american trading but india mein nahi kar sakte liquidity nahi hai india mein uh, tax rates are very high in the short run and brokerage costs are high which is why our style of quant trading is 6 mahine mein ek baar trade karo uh, rest of the time strengthen your algos improve your coding and make sure that the signals on which you are rebalancing every 6 month get stronger and stronger effectively you are doing consistent compound with a little champs but with with uh, python coding rather than with a human being thank you sir for clarifying the positioning of the fund which was more important the way people look at it and start making perception about it you know that ye this quant aisa nahi hai ya day to day nahi ho raha monthly nahi ho raha and all that so you know i think it was good that people now get to understand the clear cut positioning of the fund So with that, we'd like to conclude the session here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Th